What the ITTF tests for? Technical leaflet T3 includes tests to establish a ball's size conformity and regularity. Basically a measure of the ball's diameter and the consistency of this diameter across a sample of the same balls. And sphericity, conformity and regularity. Sphericity is another way of saying the roundness of the ball and something that we consider in our beer test video. The tests are conducted in laboratory conditions using a combination of calibrated electronic devices, mechanical support devices and measuring pins, which helps to ensure consistency and accuracy across the testing. The diameter of each ball that has a seam is measured four times, across the axis including its seam line, both poles and an arbitrary line. And it's these measurements which are compared to the specifications in technical leaflet T3. How are tests are done? I don't have access to that type of laboratory equipment. Instead, I'm limited to using these digital calipers, which measure to two decimal places. Each ball was measured three times, once along the seam, once perpendicular to the seam, and one random measurement. The digital calipers were reset to zero before each measurement was taken. The diameter of the ball was obtained by sliding the ball back and forth in the jaws of the calipers until the jaws were open wide enough for the ball to be held lightly in them. If the jaws were open too wide, the balls would simply fall through and the value would not be counted. If the jaws were not open wide enough, the ball would fall out when I turned the calipers towards the camera to get a visual reading. Our results. Size, conformity and regularity. T3 requires the diameter of every celluloid ball to be a minimum of 39.5mm and a maximum of 405 the mean of the average for the maximum and minimum diameters for each ball must be in the range 39.6 to 40.4 millimetres. For non celluloid balls, this Dura Super P40 Plus ball, there's a minimum diameter requirement of 40.00 millimetres and the maximum diameter must not exceed 40.60 millimetres. The mean of the average for the maximum and minimum diameters for each ball must be in the range 40 to 40.5 millimetres. For both balls, the standard deviation of the average diameter may not exceed 0.06 millimetres. In our testing, the minimum diameter for a celluloid ball was 39.69 millimetres. The maximum diameter was 39.87 millimetres. The sample mean average was 39.762 millimetres and the standard deviation of the average diameter was 0.029 millimetres. The minimum diameter for a plastic ball was more. It was 40.15 millimetres and the maximum diameter was 40.41. The sample mean average was 40.271 and the standard deviation of the average diameter was 0.025. So both jewelers plastic ball and the cellular ball passed T3 specification tests for size and regularity and conformity. Sphericity, conformity and regularity. The sphericity or roundness test for the ball is measured by comparing each ball's minimum and maximum diameters. To pass the sphericity conformity test, the absolute difference between the two figures needs to be less than 0.35 millimeters for a celluloid ball and less than 0.25 millimeters for a plastic ball. The sample mean sphericity is stricter and sets a limit of 0.25mm for celluloid balls and 0.2mm for plastic balls. To pass the sphericity regularity tests, both balls need a standard deviation of sphericity of less than 0.6mm. In our testing, the biggest difference in the three measurements of the diameter of a celluloid ball was 0.12mm and 0.21mm for a plastic ball. The average difference for all the celluloid balls was 0.07 millimetres and 0.103 for the plastic balls. The standard deviation of sphericity was 0.028 for dual celluloid ball and 0.048 for the plastic ball. So both the dual plastic and celluloid balls passed T3's size, sphericity, regularity and conformity tests. Our conclusions. After a bounce test, when plastic balls would randomly get stuck in our drop bottle, I was concerned about how round these plastic balls were, or to be more accurate, weren't. Me thinks they're not spherical. And while both these balls pass our test in this category, 
there's no getting away from the fact that we found Jewelers plastic ball is bigger than the celluloid ball, which isn't surprising when you consider that the ITTF has set the minimum size of non-celluloid ball to be 40 millimeters, which is 0.50 millimeters more than the minimum size for a celluloid ball. And this increase in size translates to a 2.577% bigger surface area, 3.888% more volume, and a circumference which is 1.281% bigger for the plastic ball. All of which will impact on how Jewelers plastic ball will travel through the air compared to their celluloid one. In addition, we also found that the variation in size of the Jewelers celluloid ball was less than the plastic one. The difference between the smallest and biggest diameter measurements for any celluloid ball was 0.18 mm compared to 0.26 mm for a plastic one. And whilst these Jewelers plastic balls were round enough to pass T3 standard deviation of sphericity tests, they were still 71.43% worse than the celluloid ball. Or to put it another way, they're not as round as a celluloid one. And lastly, a result which was very similar for both balls. The average amount by which both the plastic and celluloid balls exceeded T3's minimum diameter size was 0.262mm for the celluloid ball and 0.271mm for the plastic ball. Very similar returns. And that makes me wonder if the manufacturers of these balls are working to the same tolerances and safe margins for the celluloid and plastic ball. But there's no denying the fact that in our tests, according to the T3 specifications, both these balls pass the roundness stakes. Although for us, there's still a little bit of concern about the roundness of this plastic ball. Thank you for watching.